Hi everyone. This video is going to be <clears throat> about how to approach the week three journal for Lib 102 Human Questions. So this week we explored the Romantic movement as a response to the European Enlightenment. In so doing, we read um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. In his video, History of Ideas Romanticism, Alain de Beton, Beton points out that Romanticism has been so influential in Western civilization that, quote, we are all now more or less, in some aspects of our sensibilities, romantics. Even if you had never heard of romanticism before taking this class, you've probably been influenced by romantic ways of thinking. In a second video called, Are You Romantic or Classical? Baton describes some of the practical differences romanticism makes as a way of engaging with life. In two to three pages, reflect on how romanticism has influenced your own way of thinking and whether overall you feel more like a romantic or a classicist. Give specific examples from your own life to illustrate your philosophical sensibility. Now, when I click on this link, uh, it actually takes me to a different article. So I'm working on that uh, through other methods. But if you uh, search this page, <clears throat> move this for a second. If you search here and you click romanticism versus classicism or romantic versus classical, it will take you to a link for this. Two worldviews, romantic and classical. So uh, this article uh, outlines uh, pretty generally some of the core tenets of the romantic attitude as well as the classical attitude. So for example, <clears throat> at the core of the romantic attitude is a trust in feeling and instinct as supreme guides to life and a corresponding suspicion of reason and analysis reason and analysis being part of the classical attitude. In relation to love, this inspires a belief that passionate emotions will reliably guide us to a partner who can provide us with 50 years or so of intimate happiness. It also leads to veneration of sex as the ultimate expression of love. In relation to work, the romantic spirit leads to a faith in spontaneous genius and a trust that all tal talented people will experience the pull of a vocation, dot, dot, dot. Keeps going. Um, romanticism was also uh, focused on uh, engagement with nature and generally in solitude and learning from nature and establishing your thinking out in the realm of nature and your own kind of individual essence in that realm. It's a lot about individuality uh, and genius and things like that. Uh, but it related to all different types of things, literature and music uh, and political opinions. Um, and then it has uh, Delacroix's painting here uh, as a symbol of the romantic attitude. This is followed by the classical uh, attitude. Again, these are large generalizations, so don't get too hung up on the details and whether or not they're fully representative of these positions. Um, but what you're supposed to do is then, in this journal, reflect on, in two to three pages, reflect on how romanticism has influenced your way, own way of thinking and whether overall you feel, feel more like a romantic or a classicist. So one thing you have to do is talk about how romanticism has influenced your own way of thinking. But then the second thing you need to do is state whether or not you feel more like a romantic or a classicist, and then give specific examples from your own life. So that's gonna be really key here, is the specificity of the examples. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, in my own life, um, I used to think actually that genius was spontaneous and uh, uh, and that you should uh, pursue what you're passionate about and maybe not necessarily um, something that just brings in money and things like that. Um, but in my own life, things have changed too. I've seen a lot of people who actually, uh, many geniuses, uh, whatever that means, uh, are geniuses or they create these great and amazing works because of all the time that they've put in uh, in their lives in relation to their craft. So for example, if you've never seen the show Chef's Table on Netflix, I highly recommend it. But, but all of those chefs in that show have been dedicated to their craft. They usually explain stories of struggle and how they had to overcome struggle in order to get to the point where they are and their masters, their master chefs and other things. So um, the, uh, so I've kind of vacillated a little bit going from thinking that, oh yeah, some people are just born inherently gifted geniuses to now thinking more along the lines that actually genius is created over time and can, and can be developed 
or at least the works of genius can be developed. So anyway, you can see here how I'm drawing like a distinction between both romanticism and classicism. I would recommend you to do the same. Don't think too much in terms of black and white, romantic, classical, but instead try to draw the line in your own uh, mind and in, in your, your own view of your own character and your interests to point to the things both from romantic and classical thinking uh, that align with your personality and your interests. So uh, again, two to three pages, make sure that you uh, uh, abide by all minimum standards. If you'd like to see the rubric, you can click on it here and go through the, uh, make sure you take a look at the learning outcomes here and how they relate and try to address everything appropriately. Uh, I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.